So everyone who's paying any attention at all knows that more people are coming across the U.S. border from foreign countries illegally than any time in American history and that the American population is changing faster than any time in the last 250 years. And that's not just true for the border states, Arizona, New Mexico, California, Texas. It's true for at least 48 of the 50 states, the contiguous states. I mean, small towns in Wisconsin and Iowa look completely different from what they look like two years ago. So this is changing the country in a way that can't be undone. There's no bigger thing that's ever happened in American history than what's happening right now. And the question is, how is it happening? Why is it happening? And who's allowing it to happen? All moving to your country. Now it's happening. That's the end of the United States, the country that you grew up in. Irreparable, forever. People in Washington, the people who control the Congress and the White House seem to be in favor of this. And now they're just kind of saying it out loud. In this investigative report, Tucker Carlson presents a comprehensive analysis of the current immigration trends affecting the United States, suggesting an unprecedented scale of migration across the U.S. border. With an intense focus on the routes migrants take, particularly through the Darien Gap, Tucker explores the broader implications these patterns have on the demographic and cultural landscape of America. Uh, you know, as soon as uh, Biden was installed, I was actually in D.C. for the quote unquote, uh, you know, uh, whatever it was where, where they installed him. And then I flew straight within about 24 hours to Eagle pa uh, to, to uh, El Paso uh, because I thought that the aliens would start flooding across the border and they did. And so from there, I flew, flew down to Colombia to the other side of the Darien Gap. Uh, because I thought that the Darien Gap would end up being a major pathway to the United States. And so went into the uh, Darien Gap on the Colombian side, uh, just not, not very far, just about an hour inside. It's very dangerous over there. And I was there with Masako Ganaha, the famous Japanese journalist, and Chuck Holton, a war correspondent friend who just got strafed yesterday in Burma. But so we were out there in the Darien Gap on the, on the Colombia side. We then flew over to Panama and went down into the Darien Gap on the Panama side. And so uh, I recognized this would likely be the major invasion route of the United States. And so I just started spending a great deal of time down there. I got to know many of the Embara Indians and Kuna Indians and others down in the jungle. And I started mapping out the pathways that they're coming in, getting to know members of the government and that sort of thing. Now keep in mind, a lot of people have no idea who I am, but I've spent most of my life downrange out overseas. I am an American, born and raised, was in the US Army, that sort of thing. And, uh, but most of my life has been downrange. Uh, for, I would say two thirds of my life has been in Middle East, Asia, uh, you know, deep and you know, I spent a year in and around China. I've written three books on Chinese information war that are only in Japanese actually, because I've been working to wake up Japan for years. So in other words, I'm not coming into this flat footed. I'm not coming into the, into this as somebody who looks at a map and thinks, hey, this might be the route. I'm looking at this as someone who has traveled in about 100 countries or lived in, a, you know, in, in so many countries. And so I, I realized these would be the routes, likely the routes. So often when you see me leave Panama, I actually go to another uh, vital terrain, which is Netherlands, right? And I uh, was there with Ava Vlardingerbroek and that sort of thing whom you know. And uh, so bottom line is there's a lot more going on here than just uh, the invasion, obviously the invasion is a kill shot to the United States. Now, anybody that can get their feet anywhere into South America, which is pretty much most of the world at this point, they can get to the United States very quickly and they can do this through the Darien Gap. Now, keep in mind, a lot of people ask, well, why don't they just fly to the United States? Many people do, actually. Many people come on student visas and that sort of thing. And anybody that can actually land closer, like many of the Chinese will actually fly to Mexico first. Some will go to Cancun and go on vacation first. And uh, if they can get a visa to Mexico, they'll go to like Cancun and they'll meet their, uh, what they call snakeheads in Mandarin is what we call coyotes, coyotes. Uh, the, the Chinese call them snakeheads. They'll meet up with their snakeheads in, in Cancun or Mexico City or Tapachula. And, uh, and then they head across up to, you know, Texas and whatnot, Yuma, all these sorts of things. And by the way, I've been across the entire US border from SpaceX all the way to San Diego uh, quite a lot, and on the Mexican side also quite a lot, but I've been across the entire U.S. border. So now uh, many of the actually Chinese will come through the northern border, as do others, but back to Darien. So they don't all go through Darien, 
Many actually use what's called the CVP-1 app. It's an application uh, that they can use to fill out this form and get on flights and fly straight from Bogota to the United States, or they fly from Guatemala to the United States. I was just over in Guatemala checking that out, actually. And so many people do fly in. The U.S. Uh, is, is flying them in 24-7, but not everybody can do that. So now we have maybe 3,000 a day coming in. The number is constantly changing, but we know the number quarter over quarter is increasing coming through the Darien Gap because more infrastructure is being put in, uh, so it's facilitating it. And, and the main funder, by the way, is the United States. It's the United States. I hear people constantly talking about how we should punish Colombia or punish Panama or stay in Mexico. That's all nonsense. The people that are talking about stay in Mexico policy have zero idea what's going on. It's like teaching calculus to somebody who doesn't actually know how to add yet. Uh, the United States is the one that's behind most of this. The main engine is something called IOM, uh, which is the, actually most of the Border Patrol agents I talked with have never heard of the Darien Gap and they've never heard of IOM. IOM is the International Organization for Migration. That's the main engine that is doing this, right? They are part of the United Nations. They have a, main, they have a big office down in Panama, the city of knowledge. It's right on the Panama Canal, actually. And there's more than, more than five dozen NGOs down there, IGOs and nonprofits. The main one is IOM. You can see people going through airports every day across the United States and Europe and Asia as well with IOM tote bags and that sort of thing. But IOM actually has the, probably the best office space in all of Panama. It's in building 110 at the City of Knowledge. I was just there about seven days ago. And it's right, they fly their flag. The City of Knowledge in Panama City used to be Fort Clayton. All the veterans of, of, of Panama know what I'm talking about. Fort Clayton was the U.S. Army South headquarters, right? Right. That's one of the most vital pieces of terrain on planet Earth. There's almost no place on planet Earth more important than that little speck of land that overlooks, overlooks the Miraflores Locks, Panama Canal, the Panama Canal Railway, and the Thatcher Ferry Bridge. The Thatcher Ferry Bridge is the bridge for Highway 1 that goes all the way down from, well, the tip of South America up, up to Colombia. And then there's that gap. That's why they call it the Darien Gap, because there's a break in the road, which they are, they are about to hook together. And, uh, and then that goes all the way, that road, and Brett Weinstein talked about it on your show. Brett did excellent down there, by the way. That, that man loves the jungle. But that, that highway goes all the way up to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and so that's a key highway. So you've got uh, Panama, such a vital piece of terrain, uh, because first of all, the Panama Canal, and secondly, the Panama Canal Railway is important, believe it or not, and that road, and Panama, just the location is vital. Now we need the Panama Canal for trade for one thing, but we also need it to get our Navy through, right? And so we're slowly losing Panama, the NGOs that are causing these invasions, like IOM, HIAS, Catholic Charities, and so many more, are also taking over governments. 